of it like of a, a wetsuit on a baby snake. That is so bizarre. Look at that. It's a little tiny baby snake. I have hardly ever seen a better example ever in my entire career. And unfortunately with chameleons, oftentimes when they have infertile eggs, they can go what's called the no-show, which is egg binding, and they can literally die. We already talked about this. No, I, did not, I did not okay that. Good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I want to just check on these little baby snakes, the clown clutch that hatched out. They should have shed probably over the last day or two. This one is actually still in shed right here. So uh, looking good. I cannot wait to see what this thing actually is when it sheds out. This is actually a lesser leopard clown ball python. Absolutely a ripper. I tell you when this thing actually sheds out, it's going to be amazing. So let's just check the other ones to see if any of the other ones shed up. Oh, we see a shed right here and look at this it's really interesting that a baby shed is just slightly different than a normal snake shed i'll talk more about that in a minute but nevertheless let's see what we got here oh my gosh and you can see just a little bit of stuck shed on this guy we'll have to go ahead and soak it it's really common with baby snakes again that baby snake shed is a little bit thicker and a little bit different on a neonate snake as opposed to an adult snake i'll talk more about that so we'll just have to soak it and get up but nevertheless this is another lesser leopard clown ball python <laughs> Oh my gosh, that thing is crazy. So I hope some of the other ones shed as well. Let's see what we have. Oh, yep, this one shed too. You can see all the little pieces of shed here. Look at this thing. Oh my gosh, that thing is ridiculous. This is actually just a super pastel clown, which would be called a killer clown, but it's also a leopard. So it's a killer leopard clown ball python. And I tell you what, that thing is what dreams are made of right there. That is gorgeous. So let's see here. We got another one here. See, this is actually another shed one out looking unbelievable. This is actually just a pastel leopard clown ball python. So this doesn't have the super pastel just like the last one but not a super pastel unbelievable it looks so good and I'm hoping this one shed out because it's so beautiful and guess what we've got a little shed I cannot wait to see it oh my gosh and this was the all gene animal that we were hoping to hit in that clutch this is actually the super pastel so killer clown but it's also a lesser and a leopard clown ball python so it's all the gene again a killer lesser leopard clown ball python and this is the one that has that little bit of paradoxing on it. Oh my god, that thing turned out so amazing once it shed. And again, I want to tell you again why baby or neonate snakes have a little bit different shed than say an adult one. Back to the shed skin of neonate snakes, which is what a baby snake is called. And it's basically a little different biochemically than say a snake that's older. Now, probably what's happening is that they need a little bit thicker sheath of skin to actually protect themselves from the fluid in the egg that's called albumin. Also, snakes actually have what's called an egg tooth, which right at the tip of their nose, they have a little tooth that's out. That helps them actually slit the egg. You guys know I cut the egg. They actually can do it on their own with that egg tooth. And of course, after they hatch, they know longer need the protection from that fluid or albumin and they also don't need the egg tooth because they've already hatched out so within a week or 10 days of a snake hatching they typically will shed out weirdly enough things like hognose will shed the same day that they hatch literally they'll hatch and then shed the same exact day and of course you might say well you know snakes that are born live don't need an egg tooth that's correct but they probably still need that kind of thicker sheath that is protecting them inside the mother right same type of deal again there's been some tests that have been done on the chemical nature of a neonate skin compared to an adult or even sub-adult skin. Basically, there's different chemical components to a neonate skin. Say, for instance, higher cholesterol in the skin. Again, a little bit thicker. So I've noticed that that first shed is a little bit harder for the snakes to get off, and oftentimes we do have to even soak them a little bit to help them shed out. So it's kind of Mother Nature's way of protecting them. Out. Think of it like a, a wetsuit on a baby snake. So the last Kluber clutch of the year, we literally have one python clutch and one Kluber clutch left. And these are actually mangrove snakes. And they were laid almost 90 days ago. Mangrove eggs, unlike a lot of other Kluber eggs that go less than 60 days, can go up to 100 days. And we have two, four, six eggs left. I was hoping maybe they were gonna be pipped out because usually we're right in that 90 day range. They could hatch out any day, but it is a bummer that this is the last clutch of the year. But I'm excited that they're mangrove snakes because I love mangrove snakes, but I did notice that one little egg went bad here. Just in the last week or so, it kind of turned a 
it kind of more like a, a yellowish, almost brownish look, a little bit of mold on it. And I thought to myself, let's go ahead and see what's inside this egg, right? Is there a little baby snake or was it infertile right from the beginning? You know, usually an egg that'll go close to 90 days before turning ugly like this usually does have a little baby and something went wrong with development. But every now and then, it's a little surprising. So what do you say we just cut into this little monkey right here and see what's inside here? It's probably not going to smell real good. It's probably not going to look real good either. But oh, 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 I, oh, I can see a little bit of bloody stuff in here, which tells me that there's probably a little baby snake in here. Yep. Yeah. Oh, guys, that is so bizarre. Look at that. It's a little tiny baby snake. For whatever reason, I'm not sure why, but this little baby didn't make it. You could see it definitely developed for quite some time before it actually passed away. I'm gonna just, oh, it smells terrible, guys. Oh. Look at it, oh, it's so gross, but I just wanna take it out and see what's going on with it. Was there some spinal kinking? Was there some deformity? Why would it die? But it's actually pretty interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and just, you know what, I'm gonna take all this out of the egg so that we can actually see. This is a great way to understand the mechanism of how a snake egg works, okay? So I'm gonna just kinda of peel this away, and you can see this big blob right here, right? That's the actual yolk. This is what the snake is actually living on, the nutrients within the snake. And then take a look at this, you see that little thing right there that's its umbilical cord that is attached right to that yolk sac and then of course it goes right into the belly of this snake right here and then they'll actually grow and develop now I don't see anything wrong with the snake at all it looks completely perfect I don't know why and for what reason it wouldn't have made it but it's still really cool to be able to actually see what a snake would be like in the egg it's unfortunate that it passed away but it's a great opportunity for us to learn together that was pretty awesome it's a bummer that it didn't make it but what a cool thing to actually get to see right I have hardly ever seen a better example ever in my entire career so this is absolutely as cool for me as I hope it is for you guys and let's hope the other six eggs actually go full term and hatch it's a good sign that there was a baby snake in here and the fact that these guys still look good hopefully we'll have some baby mangrove snakes any day back with Jessica and more geckos but this time is this the last this is all, we're almost done oh I'm my so happy. gosh you guys know that we had a, a gazillion leopard geckos this year, and these are the last yeah, ones. Just oh my god, out. look at his little heads. Is that a little Murphy's patternless maybe? It's like an albino one. Yeah. yeah, an albino Murphy's patternless. Oh my god, that is so absolutely adorable. And uh, it looks like over here we have uh, a little Eclipse Super Snow, huh? Yeah, This thing looks, looks really, really cool. It's not quite as uh, crazy pied as some of the ones we've produced, but still absolutely adorable. So it looks like literally, there's probably less than a couple dozen left to hatch for the year. So uh, that's pretty crazy. I'm so happy. I oh my know. God, this year was so crazy. I know. <laughs> Jessica really bred the geckos like crazy this year, which means we had a lot of babies, which is really craziness. Again, you guys know that we're not gonna be producing as many I geckos know. ever again. So uh, this is the last time we're hatching thousands and thousands of geckos. We're still gonna have a lot of geckos, but yeah. nothing like we've ever had before. So so uh, great year this year and uh, on the website there are a million leopard geckos if you guys are interested. Take a look at this absolutely adorable veil chameleon. This is a female veil chameleon. You may notice something different about this particular animal, the fact that it has white legs. This is what they call translucent. It's a recessive mutation and it's really just piebald. It's just like a piebald ball python or whatever the case is. So a friend of mine actually contacted and said, I have a female translucent veil chameleon. Would you be interested? And I was like, yeah, they always have been awesome. Ever since I first seen them, I thought they were super cool so i said sure now there is a little bit of a downside to this do you notice how fat she is unfortunately sometimes when you get female veil chameleons and they're not in with a the male they can actually still become rabbit i'm pretty sure she is full of eggs right now now you may think oh that's awesome well number one there's really very rarely parthenogenesis so they wouldn't be fertile eggs and unfortunately with chameleons oftentimes when they have infertile eggs they can go what's called denosia, which is egg binding, and they can literally die. So what we're gonna have to do with this little girl is we're gonna set her up, get her off the stress of everything that's going on, put a nice plant base in there with some soil so she can dig, and hopefully she'll go ahead and pass all of those infertile eggs. Once she does that, we can maybe then think about breeding her to Raul, our male veil chameleon, and maybe get some het translucence. Maybe we'll raise them up and down the road, produce some, maybe down the road, who knows, we'll maybe produce some veil, and who knows down the road, maybe we'll produce some, Oh my gosh. <laughs> Who knows, maybe down the road we'll produce some translucent veil chameleons. This monkey is absolutely gorgeous, but unfortunately we're gonna have to really work hard to make sure she's okay and I'll keep you guys updated. And uh, maybe you learned a little bit about female chameleons today. Laurie for 
or something right now. I don't know how she's going to feel about it. So let's see what happens. Lori? What? Hello. I, uh, you, know, you know that a lot of times I just buy animals and I don't ask your permission. Yeah, I, I know. I ask your forgiveness. So I was thinking I want to ask your permission. And we kind of talked about this a little bit, but I wanted to kind of get it on the record so that something happens, you know, you'll know about it and stuff like that. About? Is it okay if I get a sloth? No. We already talked about this. No, I, I did not. Said, I did not okay that. I thought you said it sounded good. We no. I never said it sounded good. We talked about it, and basically we put a pin in it. Pin in it. Yes. No. Because we are. There's no way or reason to get one right now. No, I'm not saying get one like tomorrow. I'm just saying like maybe in the next six months get a slot. Like I start looking for the slot now. So no, that... because if you find the sloth tomorrow, then you're going to have it next week. And we don't have a place. It doesn't well, I'm not fit gonna buy in. It before we have a place. We're going to have a, a, a place all set up. So I'm going to do my research first, and then I'm going to get You can a slot. research. Do not talk purchase with anybody. What? You can research. Well, I might have to talk purchase to get the information. No, then you're talking to the wrong people. So you're no. good? So, no, so, so what I saying, am not. So what you're is it that, is on the record. I said, do not buy a slot. No, but period. what you're saying is that if I do my research and stuff like that, I could maybe get a slot in a little bit. I said, do research. That's okay. all I'm saying. All right, so I think this is good. So I'm going to go ahead and start researching sloths. If you guys know, reach out to me. I want to know something about uh, how to keep two slow sloths and where to get them and stuff like that. I want a really tame one. Uh, I think Lori's on board. What do you guys think? <laughs> these things are so absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Just take a look at these. Of course, these are the giant leaf tailed geckos, the Europlates, Frimbriatus. And uh, if you notice, this is the male down here. He's a little bit more slender. And this female has actually laid eggs in the past. I'm going to turn over this way and I'm going to actually show you. You can start to see eggs building in her right here where she's starting to get a little bit of puffiness and you can see, even see the white right here where the eggs are coming in of course this is the male you can kind of tell the difference between these two guys here so hopefully with any luck we will get some more eggs and this time maybe they'll be fertile and we'll actually hatch them so it's been a while since I've actually updated you guys on the black milk snakes, right? These are the ones that kind of are born tricolor like a Honduran milk snake and then get black or like a Mexican black king as they get big. They're also a really large milk snake. They'll get like seven foot. Well, this is kind of one that's starting to go through the change. You can still see the bands, that black, yellow, and red, but it's kind of faded and really sooty looking. And then you can start to see this one is even more sooty looking. It's not quite black yet, but it's definitely getting there where you can almost hardly see the triads and that's the bands, they call them triads. You can still see them really faintly, but they're definitely getting darker and darker. And then you can see this one where you basically can't even see the triads now. It's almost jet black. It's gonna even get more jet black as it gets bigger, but you can see the progression from one that's just turning to one that's kind of halfway turned to one that's almost 100% turned. Again, when this one gets a little bit bigger, it's gonna be jet black. You can still really faintly see a little bit of the triading, but for the most part, it's already black. It's gonna be to the point where you can't see any triads at all. These guys are super cool milk snakes that you don't see very often and I'm super excited to see when these guys get to adult and hopefully we can produce some more of these guys. But it's super cool to finally start to see them turn black. And by the way, if you guys enjoyed this video, here's another video that I would like you guys to see. Over here is a playlist. Can you click on that playlist? Just watch a bunch of our videos if you don't mind. Over here is that subscribe button. While you're over there, can you turn the post notifications on? Remember to have an absolutely amazing day and while you're at it, be kind to someone. I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.